Hey, what's up guys? In today's video, we're gonna see how to remove the intake manifold, replace the gaskets, how to check for vacuum leaks by the intake manifold. And also we're gonna see a couple of tests on the intake manifold runners. Now, one of the best way to check for vacuum leaks is to use a propane torch and a scan tool with live data, which will give you access to the information like long-term fuel trim and short-term fuel trim for both banks. You need to have the engine running at least in closed loop or at the operating temperature. Then you watch the values of the long-term fuel trim and short-term fuel trim and begin to apply the propane gas in the area where you suspect the vacuum leak. Usually it has to be at the connection point of the intake manifold and the engine head. That's the point where the gasket is. So you want to spray in these points around. You can see how it went from a positive fuel trim to minus 10, minus 9. Okay, so we've got at least one vacuum leak and here we've got one more all right so we definitely have some uh, vacuum leaks by the intake manifold gasket okay so let's start by removing the air injection pump we've got here a 10 millimeter or a e10 now you've got this bracket just pry it out and what i like to do is to keep the bolt on the part i removed it from okay Now, if you have a closer look here, you're going to see the intake manifold runner's actuator. One of the first tests you can do is to see if this piston moves. You've got this plastic rod. You need to be able to move it freely. Okay, and it does move. On top here, we've got the solenoid. On the solenoid, we've got this vacuum line which connects on the intake manifold on the bottom there. It takes vacuum from there. And once the computer decides to move the intake runners, it will deliver the vacuum through this line to the actuator. So from this point, we can begin to do a couple of tests. So for the first test, I'm going to disconnect this vacuum line from the solenoid, the one which goes to the actuator. Uh, this looks quite brittle. So I'm going to take my hand vacuum pump, connect this nozzle here. And let's see, once I apply the vacuum, you should see this rod moving. And it does move. Okay. You don't want, for example, to apply all the vacuum possible in order to move this. It has to move at least after two pumps. And this gauge is broken. Here it should be zero. So the actuator works, which is good. Now I want to get access to this solenoid, so I'm going to take out this air hose. Now let's see, I'm going to press on. You could hear the click on the solenoid. All the vacuum is gone. It definitely needs a lot more vacuum than what this pump can provide. That's why you could not see the rod moving. But now you can see it moving. Okay, now it's all the way. Now the vacuum can travel freely through the solenoid. This is basically the ultimate test. Okay, there are no leaks. The vacuum is holding pretty well. And the command is working also. The 12 volts are coming directly from the computer. Now let's continue by taking out this wiring harness, which sits on top here. It basically delivers the wires to all these components. So let's unplug the coil packs. Let's unplug the injectors. You just press on these tabs and the connectors comes out. Can be a little bit tricky, but not impossible. For example, this connector for the injector, it's stuck in here. So I have to first take out the fuel rail. I'm going to need the E10 and you've got four bolts around. Okay, just gently press it. From this side is free. Let's disconnect this PCV hose. Let's take out the mass airflow sensor. Which is not that good. Okay, so I think this is gonna be enough and I will be able to take out the intake manifold from here. That okay. 
Now let's unplug this PCV line and the VAP line. Let's unplug this brake booster line. You just press on these tabs like that. Now if you want, you can just leave the throttle body here. It's not gonna bother anyone. Just unplug the connector and it will come out when the intake manifold is out as well. Then use a E10 and remove this AGR valve hose which connects to the intake manifold. gasket here as well all right now you get to this point where the intake manifold is free it's only the throttle body attached to it so we've got here four bolts e12s so you're gonna need a long extension and open these bolts they are not that tight let's disconnect this vacuum line now the intake manifold is free this can be a little bit heavy, so... Now, if you want to get access to the intake manifold runners, we need to take out this cover of the intake manifold. We've got a bunch of bolts around here, which I want to clean them up a little bit. So you're gonna need a T30. then to pry it out like this okay so we've got a bunch of gunk in here but surprisingly these flaps work which is great like in my situation i found here a problem which is this crack here this thing is broken so there is going to be a lot of air leaks here and this air leak can actually affect pretty much a lot so in my situation i kind of need a new intake manifold so i'm not even gonna be bothering to clean it up i actually used some hot glue this should be solid up to 100 degrees celsius and 100 degrees celsius is not the temperature of the intake air i've seen a maximum of 50 degrees celsius so in theory this should last even for a long time i will see anyway it's better than nothing and you can see even though it's still a fluid now it's very hot it does not leak it stays there solid and of course i'm going to do a leak test again and see if it leaks or not so yeah meanwhile let's install it back you need to use some gasket maker if you want to seal it properly but i'm not going to do that because I'm gonna look for a new used intake manifold in the future. So in your situation, make sure that you clean it very well and seal it with gasket maker. It's quite an easy process in theory, but it's a lot of uh, boring work. So luckily I can skip that at the moment. Okay, now it's time to torque it to nine foot pounds. Now under here you can find the knock sensors, you've got two of them for each bank and here you've got the ports through which the air pump is injecting air at the first startup. Okay, you've got two ports, one here and one here and on this side here is the AGR valve. You can see down there the valves, make sure there are no debris going in there and yeah, let's give it a nice clean and put back the intake manifold. Now let's torque this E12 bolts to 20 newton meters. <laughs> I 
And now probably the most difficult part is to reinstall the injectors properly. Retrieve these O-rings from here. There is an injector here which didn't want to come out and I don't want to force it because sometimes they can break. I'm gonna put it on the fuel rail here. Looks like the injectors are on. It's actually a good sign that they go in very hard because that means usually they are sealed. Let's tighten the bolts. Let's torque the fuel rail to 7 foot pounds. Okay guys, the car runs fine. I've done some tests. There are no leaks, especially here where I use the glue. There are no leaks by the intake manifold gasket. So thanks for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you have questions, leave them in the comments below. And I will see you in the next video.